In 2009, James Cameron introduced the world to Avatar, and things were never the same again. Okay, that's not quite true. Everyone went wild for Avatar for about a year, but it didn't leave the biggest cultural footprint. Which is strange when you think about it, because it's one of the most profitable movies of all time, and a landmark in cinematic visual effects. In this video, we're going to be looking at the cutting-edge techniques that brought the original Avatar to life, and sneaking a peek at the sequels. Yes, the sequels are still coming. Eh, supposedly. Avatar was unleashed upon the world in 2009, but the origins of the project go back a lot further than that. Did you know that movie was based on a true case? According to the director, his initial concept was inspired by the many science fiction books he had read over the years, and some critics have actually noted some striking similarities between Avatar and the work of Soviet sci-fi authors Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. But that's another video. In 1996, during production on Titanic, Cameron said that Avatar would be his next project, and that it would feature several wholly computer-generated performances. This was a pretty tall order for the time, and Cameron eventually had to concede that Hollywood's visual effects capabilities just weren't quite there yet. So he did what any director who called themselves King of the World at the Oscars would do. He went away, spent a bunch of time under the ocean, and designed a state-of-the-art 3D camera. You know, normal King of the World stuff. Obviously, we know that James Cameron really believes in Avatar, and we're used to him taking a long time to deliver. But back then, everyone pretty much forgot about the project. Until 2005, when Cameron delivered a proof-of-concept short to 20th Century Fox. Having been impressed by the likes of Peter Jackson's King Kong and Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Cameron was confident that the technology was now up to the task of delivering on his vision. And Fox, with some reservations, agreed. Hey, the guy made Titanic, you can see why his studio would take a chance on his weird sci-fi fever dream. So Cameron got the green light, and production officially began in 2006. Now, 2006 to 2009 is quite a long time. Why did it take so long, you ask? Well… Not only did Cameron and his team have to conceptualize an alien world with its own environment, indigenous species, and culture, they had to figure out how to bring that world to life on screen in a way that looked immersive and realistic. <laughs> no biggie. They spent many months designing Pandora and the Na'vi, including developing a whole new language for them to speak and designing a brand new ecosystem from the ground up. Once that minor task was over, principal photography began. To prepare, the actors playing the Na'vi all traveled to Hawaii together to connect with nature, shooting bows and arrows, riding horses, fishing, and even sleeping in the forest. We hope they enjoyed all that fresh air, because they didn't get much once they actually started filming. All the scenes on Pandora involving the Na'vi and the humans in their blue avatars made use of state-of-the-art performance capture technology. Now, motion capture allows a human actor to provide the movements, facial expressions, and dialogue for a character who is eventually realized using CGI. Andy Serkis as Gollum is one of the most famous examples, but Avatar took it a step further. The actors all wore the familiar mocap suits that we've all seen from behind-the-scenes documentaries with the funny ping-pong balls all over them, but Cameron also made use of a brand new virtual camera system. This allowed the actors' movements to be projected into a virtual environment in real time, and even integrated into pre-visualized set pieces on the fly. As well as that, the actors wore special caps that captured all of their micro-expressions, meaning that none of the nuances were lost in translation on the way to the computer. Now we know what you're thinking. It looks kind of goofy without the computer effects, right? But you've got to admit, the results are pretty impressive even now. Cameron also made use of something called a volume, a motion capture stage bigger than any that had ever been used before. The bigger and more sophisticated your set, the more control you have over everything that's happening, from camera movements to actors to lighting. And Cameron is nothing if not a control freak. Just ask Kate Winslet. 
And as well as being a control freak, of course, Cameron likes to go big. There were so many visual effects shots in the final film that Microsoft developed an entirely new cloud computing system specifically for the production so that Cameron's teams could easily access the insane amounts of data they needed. Called Gaia, this new digital asset management system enabled the filmmakers to easily keep track of every digital element needed at every stage of the process. And it did not stop there. The Foundry, working with Weta Digital, developed a brand new texturing and paint software for use on the film called Mari. This was essential for the filmmakers to get the vibrant colors and details on Pandora to pop as much as possible. The level of visual effects and data packed into Avatar eventually meant that a single minute of the film required 17 gigabytes of storage. Like we said, big. And if you thought Avatar 1 was big, wait until you hear about Avatars 2 through 20. Okay, okay, he's not making another 19 Avatars, but he is making four. Now, we don't know a huge amount about the stories Cameron has come up with for the sequels, but we do know that Jake Sully and Neytiri's child will feature heavily. Oh, and we've seen some behind-the-scenes pictures of horses covered in mocap dots, so that's something. Now, we also know that, once again, Cameron has had to wait for technology to catch up with his ambitions. Now, this might explain why the movies keep getting delayed, because a lot of Avatar 2 is reportedly going to take place underwater. So, naturally, that required a whole new level of performance capture. As you can imagine, combining that kind of technology with water wasn't the easiest of tasks. And sure, as with the first movie, the behind-the-scenes shots of mocap actors and their big mocap tank look kinda goofy. But James Cameron is a perfectionist, so we've got faith that the final results will be impressive. Wanna see him? Now, before we all slip out of our alien bodies and head back to our spaceship, you've probably heard a little about the Avatar Park at Disney World Florida. You may have even been there. Pandora, the world of Avatar, followed in the movie's footsteps by taking a heck of a long time to arrive. Development began in 2011, and it was 2017 when the attraction finally opened. In order to make the area as immersive as possible, a fully canonical storyline was developed. Oh, in case you were wondering, events of the attraction take place a generation after the first movie, with a fictional tourism company bringing people from Earth to Pandora to take in the sights. It also features original music composed by James Howard, who composed the music for Avatar, as well as a 3D flight simulator. Oh, and uh, one of the most advanced animatronic figures ever made. All in all, the park costs something like half a billion dollars to develop. And hey, sure, maybe Disney were sore because they narrowly missed out on building a Harry Potter-themed area at Disney World, so they wanted to build something to compete. But competition often breeds impressive results. Just ask James Cameron. He spent his whole career competing with, well, uh, himself. <laughs> and we can't wait to see what he does next. Of course, production on the Avatar sequels is taking so long we don't know when they'll appear. In fact, we're surprised M. Night Shyamalan got a sequel greenlit at all. What? A different Avatar? What do you mean a different Avatar? Oh, the one with the... Oh, ooh, 